Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, also comment and subscribe, and let's get started. Now we do have sine x to the power 100 plus cosine x to the power 100 is equal to 1, and we're going to be solving for values of x. Now, I don't think you would want to take an expression like sine squared x plus cosine squared x and raise it to the 50th power. That would be crazy, right? I mean, we know that it equals 1, but I don't think you want to do that because that would create a lot of problems. So we're not going to go that route. We're going to do this problem a little differently. And it's a, actually a very interesting method because sometimes for solving equations, we use inequalities. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to compare this expression to something that I'm familiar with. Obviously, I think we all know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1, right? Well, okay. Does that mean anything in terms of this problem? Well, it is going to mean something if we can associate these two expressions. So here's my claim. All right. This is just a claim, but of course, I need to prove that. Okay. My claim is that sine x to the power 100 is less than or equal to sine squared x. Now, why am I saying that? Because I'll be using these inequalities to solve the problem. All right. But how can I prove this assertion? Right. Well, just consider the difference. You know, a lot of times if you are trying to prove an inequality, it might be a good idea either to look at a ratio if you know that things are non-negative or look at a difference. Right. Because if you can prove that th this difference is negative or non-positive, then you can basically say that one of them is less than or equal to the other one. OK, so here's what I'm going to look at. Sine x to the power 100 minus sine squared x. And according to my claim, this needs to be less than or equal to zero. OK, let's see what happens. Now, obviously, this can be factored, right? I can take out a sine squared and this should give me sine x to the power 98 minus one. Great. Now, what do we know about the sine and cosine? And whatever I say here for sine is also true for cosine. So we don't have to do this twice. OK, now. First of all, we do know that uh, sine and cosine have a certain range. They can not take all the values like tangent or cotangent. Well, they need to be, first of all, between negative one and one. So let's go ahead and write that down. Sine x or cosine x for the same reason needs to be between negative one and one inclusive. But here we're dealing with, with even powers. So if I square this expression, I can safely say that this needs to be less than or equal to one. Of course, I can say the same thing for the absolute value of sine x as well. Cool. Now, how do we use this? Well, it means that we have an expression that is less than or equal to one. But isn't this also true for the 98th power? Of course, for any even power, this is actually true. So. What is that supposed to mean? It means that the stiff difference here, sine x to the power 98 minus 1, is less than or equal to 0. So it can't be positive. OK, cool. It can be 0, but it can't be positive. What about sine squared x? Well, sine squared x needs to be greater than or equal to 0. So we're kind of like multiplying. Suppose at this point that sine, sine x to the power 98 does not equal 1. So this would be negative, And this would be positive all the time. Their product needs to be negative, including zero. Basically, we can safely say that this product is less than or equal to zero, which proves our claim. OK, so basically, we just proved it. This is a true. This is a true statement. OK, cool. Well, I can say the same thing for cosine, because if you just go the same route, you can prove it similarly. Now, how does this help me? solve this problem, right? It's still maybe not clear. So let's go ahead and write this inequality and the cosine version together. And let's see what happens. So that's going to be our next step. OK, so now I have that sine x to the power 100, right? Is less than or equal to sine squared x. I also have that cosine to the power 100 x is less than or equal to cosine squared x. Great. Now, what do we do with these inequalities? We add them. Why? 
because we know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1, so I want to be able to use this identity. So let's go ahead and add these and see what happens. When you add these two inequalities, something interesting happens because we get sine x to the power 100 plus cosine x to the power 100 is less than or equal to sine squared plus cosine squared, which is equal to 1. Great. So now we have that our original expression, which was equal to 1, is now less than or equal to 1. But less than or equal to 1 basically means that it has to equal 1 because it's given, right? I mean, come on, that's what it is. So the strict inequality does not apply here. What is that supposed to mean then? Well, it means that these two equations, or inequalities I should rather say, they should be equations. So instead of having less than or equal to, I should have, in order for this to be true, I have to have sine x to the power 100 equals sine squared x and cosine x to the power 100 equals cosine squared x. Isn't that beautiful? So this is the power of algebra. From an equation, we got a system, actually I should say from an equation, we got an inequality, and from those inequalities, we got a system of equations. Okay, now, how do we handle this system? Easy, right? I mean, think about it. Like, when does sine x to the second power equal the 100th power? Well, one of the cases is sine x could be zero, right? Or sine x could be one or negative one, correct? All right. And when, for example, if sine x is zero, then cosine is, is one or negative one, or vice versa. So it's just going to work. Basically, what happens is if you consider the unit circle, basically at every corner here, at zero, at pi over two, at pi, and at three pi over two, this is always going to be satisfied. Now, how do we express this as a general, how do we express that as a general solution? Well, we can safely say that x needs to be a multiple of pi over 2, and 0 is included. Notice that 0 is a solution as well. So you can basically write it as x equals n times pi over 2. And this represents basically all the solutions if n is an integer. All right? Well, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.